Hey, hey, hey. All right, all right. Lovely to see you again. Connor Rhodes from Slim Society, podcast number 398 in the public. Um, private, no idea. Over 2,000 or something. And we're back again. Lovely to see you again. Um, 24th of June, coming up to 5 p.m. Wednesday. If you're watching live, I hope you've had a fantastic day. I hope you've been enjoying the weather. I am in central England. The weather has been a scorcher, hence the shorts. I'm actually looking not too reddened. Ooh, little bit on top of the old cue ball, but I'm looking not too reddened. Some, you can tell what the weather's been like if you follow this page, because slowly I just start to blend into the color of this chair. But anyway, I hope you've been enjoying the weather. Um, I hope you were pleased about some of the lockdown announcement changes if you're watching or listening from the UK as well. Gyms are still not open. Gyms are still not open. My Facebook feed is filled with angry personal trainers and gym owners, but you just do what you can do, don't you? It's just try to focus on what you can focus on and control what you can control. You can still get out running. Maybe you've got some home exercise equipment. You can still eat well. My members are still on it, still exercising where and when they can, still eating well, still trying to do what they can for their health. And I hope you are too. So anyway, um, I've come to talk to you about two really important topics. Number one, fibromyalgia. Number two, stress eating. Both both can be absolute plagues on people sometimes. I've coached many people, and still now coach many people, with fibromyalgia, also known as chronic pain, um, which is a little bit more of an easier terminology to understand. Um, and the same with stress and emotional eating too. That one is something that we all come up against. So let's start off with fibromyalgia then. This question came in for a, from a lady and she, she was actually asking, the question came in about collagen protein and, and does collagen protein help fibromyalgia? Um, which was strange, which was a strange question. I don't, I don't know if that's what people are saying or where she'd heard this or seen this somewhere, but the short answer is collagen protein doesn't really help anything. <laughs> it's not, it's not amazing. You, you just, just get all of the protein, just get a good protein intake overall, not a specific collagen protein intake. And then it'll be great. Your body will just make all the collagen it needs anyway. And it'll be fantastic. You'll have all the protein building blocks, not just that one collagen. So protein intake for fibromyalgia can definitely help. That's one of the things we're going to talk about soon. Um, but collagen specifically, no, you don't really want to aim for collagen anyway, but I thought I'd come here and just talk to you about fibromyalgia in general, what it is, maybe and perhaps and hopefully what we can do about it. So fibromyalgia, it's, it's more easily understood as chronic pain, but it's also, it's also kind of non-specific pain. It's kind of undiagnosed pain. Fibromyalgia is a diagnosis, but also it's kind of a non-specific diagnosis. It's not actually saying or telling you or informing you what's going wrong. Fibromyalgia is not something that you can catch or anything like this. It, it means you're experiencing pain. Chronically means ex for an extended period or all of the time. But if it's labeled as fibromyalgia, that means that the doctors, they can't really identify why, which, which is the start then of a huge struggle for people sometimes. It can be the start for just a huge struggle for people sometimes to figure out what is causing this pain for them. Because there is a reason, which is one of my hopefully biggest motivating points that you could leave this with, leave here with if you are a fibromyalgia sufferer. Um, like some of my members are, is that everything in the universe in the universe has causality. Things don't happen for no reason. Things just don't pop into existence, do they? And things just don't disappear either. So if you're in pain, there's a reason. There is a reason. No, we might not be able to understand specifically what it is right now. No, maybe not. The and I'm so sorry about that. If that's you, I am. I'm genuinely so sorry. But the human, it, it's not really anybody's fault. It's not the doctor's fault. They're not trying to not help. 
It's not your fault either. Not necessarily. It's just the human body's just so complicated. The human body's just so complicated. We just don't know how the entire thing works yet. We don't know all the bits and pieces and all the nuts and bolts. We don't understand how we fit together. Honestly, we don't. We don't understand everything about nutrition, just in science in general. We just don't. So some things can be going wrong and it can't be sometimes identified why. Now, does that mean don't do anything about it? Is it then just, oh, I've got fibromyalgia and that's just the pain and I just need to live with it? No, no. What, you eat, you eat perfectly, do you? And you do what exercise you can on a good and regimented structure consistently, do you? And you take all your vitamins and minerals and your body weight's in a good range and you get a good amount of sleep per night and your stress levels are not crazy. There's no psych psychosomatic or psychological issues that can proven manifest in physical pain. All this just sorted, is it? Because if all that's hunky-dory, then yes, okay, I'm not sure too, but, but nearly always there's things we can do. There's areas that can be worked on. No, we might not know specifically what's going wrong or where the pain's coming from or what's going to fix it. But if, we, if, if we're in a boat and there's holes in it, if we just start, we might not know which holes are sinking it. But if we just start plugging the health holes, who knows where we can end up? Especially with the human body, I've seen some things that seem like miracles occur. I've seen some recoveries and some changes in people, not with just fibromyalgia, but sometimes chronic fatigue, sometimes autoimmune issues, sometimes IBS gut issues, sometimes mental health issues, diabetes, polycystic ovary syndrome, heart disease and cardiovascular disease. I've, I've seen turnarounds of these that you wouldn't believe unless I'd seen it with my own eyes and played part in it, I wouldn't have believed. And I've seen it with fibro too. I've seen people attack and it might be in their own way and it might be in their own pace and they might not be able to use the same tools as everyone can, but who can? Everyone's a little bit different anyway, aren't they? If you, if you start where you're at, we can work with it. So do we have some body weight that we could lose? Because if we've got chronic pain, maybe it's coming in the joints or where, wherever it's coming from, if we can lighten the load and stress on the body, don't we think that'd help? It might do. Only one way to tell though, isn't there? So why don't we just give it a try? Why don't we just do all we can? Why don't we start attacking health from all the different angles? There's no pill that the doctors can give you. There's no potion that can fix it. They don't know what it is. That's why they've given you the label of fibro. It's the same label, label as, or a similar label. It's in the same vein as chronic fatigue. That means you're tired, but they don't know why. It's the same as IBS. I have this. Do you know what IBS means? It's an umbrella term that means stomach ache. You go to the doctors, you say, my stomach hurts. They say, oh, you've got IBS. Do you know what that means? It means you've got stomach ache. You say, I've got stomach ache. They say, yeah, you've got stomach ache. And they just leave you with a label because they can't fix it. We don't know how these things work. FND, functional neurological disorder. This is a, something in a similar vein for the brain. Things go wrong sometimes and we don't know why. That doesn't mean don't attack. If you if chronic fatigue or chronic pain, Imagine if you lost 10 kg. Have you ever picked up a 10 kg? If you've got 10 kg to lose, have you ever picked up a 10 kg dumbbell? Imagine carrying that around all day. 20 kg, 30 kg. Think about the size of, maybe you've got some weight to lose. Think about the size of that target. Try and find a dumbbell that weighs the same as that and then carry it around all day. You can't even get up out of bed without it. This is the literal situation. If you lighten the load, you never know. What might feel better? Body fat also causes inflammation inside the body, chronic low-grade inflammation. Quite possibly a correlating factor with fibro and maybe all chronic fatigue. Maybe some other issues too. What about nutrition? Are we eating perfectly? I know for a fact the answer is no, <laughs> because I'm not eating perfectly either. I'm not eating perfectly either. I ain't no nutritional Jesus. I ain't eating perfectly either. No one is. We can all eat better, can't we? We can all eat better. Are we getting all the vitamins and minerals that we can? Are we getting those fruits and veggies in, the ones that work and feel good for us? Are we getting a good protein intake daily? Whether we're a vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian, fussy eater, omnivore, anything, it doesn't matter. Are we getting that good protein intake in? Are we maybe taking a multivitamin on top of it? Why not? Can't hurt, can it? Do we supplement vitamin D? Because if the answer is no, you damn well should. It doesn't matter who you are. Supplement vitamin D. 
if you've got chronic fatigue or fibro and you're not on vitamin D, I'm sorry, what are we doing? This is a baseline easy fix. It's like 10 quid on Amazon. It's a hormone that functions in almost every cell in your entire body. No cell in your entire body will work, will function correctly if you're vitamin D deficient. And we all live in England and it's cloudy most of the time. Maybe not today, praise from above, but 99% of every other damn day. So if you're not on that vitamin D, why not? Do we take an omega-3 fish oil? Is an omega-3 fish oil going to fix it? Or the vitamin D? Maybe not. No, but it's just helping, isn't it? It's just giving your body all the little building blocks and new bits of nutrition that you require. If we've got good food and we've got a good body weight, do you think we'd be in a better position? We would be, wouldn't we? We've got less stress on the body. We're looking after it a little bit more. We're feeding it everything it requires. What about exercise? And I know, I know, if you've got fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue, exercise can be a demon. It can be a struggle. I see people go down. They try and go for a basic walk, they go down. Maybe not even the day after. Maybe the day after the day after. Headaches, sometimes fuzziness, can't focus, physical pain, unbelievable fatigue sometimes for people. But if you can walk, you can do it. You know, sometimes doing too much is not a bad thing. You won't die, number one. Number two, how, how do you know how much is too much until you've done too much? You don't. So once you've done too much and two days after you feel like crap, okay. Steady Sally, scale it back. Maybe you went for a 5K walk and you feel like death, too much. Too much. <laughs> Try two and a half K. Scale it back significant. See how you feel. Still feel a bit too tight. One K. Find what you can do. Build. This is correct goal setting no matter what your goal is. It doesn't matter. This is how, it should, this is how if you were working with me, this is what we would do. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're a top athlete, an aging elderly population person, fibromyalgia, polycystic over. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We find where you're at and then we start moving forward. I've worked with people disabled, joints fused, spines fused with dual rods. People who, if they sit on the floor, they can't get back up. People bound to wheelchairs. People with MS. I've trained all kinds of people. You, you, maybe you can do a little bit of armchair exercising. Just keep your arms strong. If you can take one step, you can do all the rest. Can you do one step? Because I've worked with people, I swear to God, who can't. I worked with a lady with MS. Can't do, couldn't at the time, sorry, correct my own language. Couldn't do one step at the time without crutches. Guess what we work towards? One. Then what? Two. If you can walk across the room. Next week, can we do one and back? Just basic. It doesn't have to be all hell on high water tough mudder challenge does it high intensity interval no steady <laughs> steady but we, if, if you're not exercising and you've got chronic pain your body is not as strong as it could be your muscles and bones are not as strong as they could be even slightly if you aren't exercising for every year that passes whether you like it or not your bones and muscles deteriorate if you've got chronic pain you need to be fighting it and the fatigue as well, but just doing what you can, even if it's just a tiny bit, even if it's one rep with one kg dumbbells, oosh, or literally it's just, I've coached people, if they sat on this chair in this position I am and did this, they can't stand up. We just start working towards it. That's all that we do. You just start where you're at. So if you're not exercising, get on it. Like I said, sleep. Are you sleeping well? You know, if you're sleep deprived, there isn't a single system in your entire body that will function correctly you won't think correctly you, you, decision making off willpower off slowed down reaction times slowed down memory impaired everything eat physical you'll, you'll get tired faster blood sugar management off hunger levels higher cravings higher everything not even just food eyesight not as good hearing not as good everything Walking, not everything, exercise, not, yeah, but Connor, what about the, yes, think of any function. There isn't a single function ever been discovered so far that when you are sleep deprived functions correctly. One of the interesting things about it, this is just kind of a little side note, but when you're sleep deprived, you don't recognize how poorly you're actually performing. When you've not slept very well, you think you're fine. But if you were studied 
how well you're performing at work or with your exercise or something. It's just the thing that's tired and slowed down, essentially, can't assess itself as being slowed down because it's assessing itself. We, anyway, we, you don't even notice how poorly you're doing when you're sleep deprived, but that can also raise stress hormones and it can have, it, it has physical effects, sleep deprivation, you know this. So if, you, if it's chronic fatigue or it's fibromyalgia, can we work on some sleeping patterns? Maybe. Can we help get a little bit more sleep? There's big things that can be worked on sometimes in those areas. What about stress? Things in the mind, like I've said already. Psychological pain can, proven, manifest as physical pain. Things in the past that hurt you in the mind or the body can continue on for so much longer after. You know this. You know the mind can affect the body. If you start thinking about something that really makes you angry, it really makes you angry. Your heart rate will increase. You'll release adrenaline. You can change your, phys your physicality with your mind. Stress does this too. It raises cortisol. Over a long period of time, this could be having negative impacts. It can be... When you look at those um, electrical brain scanners, what, is it, what are they called? Leave on a comment. Is it ECG? Is it ECG? Um, leave on comments if you're watching this video um, as well. If you've got questions on anything that I've said so far, um, if, you're, if you're a sufferer of these and you, you want help or you're looking for information or you've just got questions, please, please leave on a comment on this video. I'll be glad to get back to you. Um, but on those electrical brain scanners, if you look at somebody who's got a broken leg and you look at somebody who's got a broken heart, they show up the same. Your brain interprets it, interprets it the same. Psychological stress and pain can manifest as physical stress or pain. So is there some past issue that might need to be worked on? A little bit of therapy, amazing. A little bit of counseling, fantastic. Amazing for the body and the mind together as one. The body and mind are so connected that they're not really different things. You know, They're not quite the same thing, but they're also not quite different things. They're not one and two different things. They're more like non-dual, which means not two. It means not one either, because they're not one, but they're also not two, they're non-dual. It's non-duality, that's interesting, isn't it? Um, if we worked on all of these things, if your body weight was down, if your nutrition was in order, if you were exercising regularly and your muscles and bones were strong, if you were sleeping well, some of the pain, again, maybe some of the fatigue too, maybe some of the other side effects, they might just be reduced. I can't promise anything. Everyone's different. You don't know either. The doctors don't know. They've got nothing. At least we've got something. We've got tools we can use. Not just painkillers to, do to dull it, to dull the pain. Useful sometimes. But fixing the symptom, not the problem. No, we don't know exactly what the problem is. We've been through it. But if we start attacking every area that we can and making improvements, I've seen what sometimes seems like miracles occur. Anyway, all right. <laughs> all right, all right. That's fibromyalgia number one. Let me see. Ooh, careful. Wires. Can't see how long we've been on the podcast. Never mind. Let's move on and let's chat about a little bit of an emotional eating. Let's talk about a little bit of stress eating and stress eating management. I've got four top tips for you in this area. And I've been so long. This, this could be, this is in fact, an entire one hour lecture in my six steps to slim um, fat loss and weight management and health management course. So I can't go into it in super ultra depth, but this is a problem that we all come up against. Point number one, my most important point, is it's normal. There's nothing wrong with you. I see so many people, so many people, feeling like, oh, I stress eat. Or when I get stressed, or I turn to food. Or once I've started eating on the biscuits, I can't stop. Or when I've had one bad day, or I turn it into others. It's like, no, it's everyone. It's me too. When people say these things, oh, I stress eat, or I... I boredom eat. Boredom is a form of stress. They, they, they say, I, I hear me too. I hear everyone. It's not just, it's not just you. It's a constant battle for all of us. 
It's nature and nurture. It's genetic and it's environment. It's all of it. The food environment makes it so, so tough. There's food everywhere. There's advertisements everywhere. It's so easily accessible. It's so cheap. It's so highly palatable, which means tasty. <laughs> it's just ultimate easy access, isn't it? Makes it tough, number one. Number two, humans are genetically primed to love, search for, seek out, consume food, especially high calorie dense foods, especially easily accessible high calorie dense foods. Good for survival in a caveman world, like we've got bodies for 300,000 year old human bodies or more. In today's world, the modern food environment, a brain that always craves food, especially in a time that's tough. You know, if you've got stress, like we said earlier, Linking back to the mind, your body interprets physical and mental stress, psychological stress, the same. If there was real danger, it might be a good idea to eat loads of food and then hide. Might it? If there was real life danger, like if you were a caveman. So you're wired up for that situation. So it's no wonder when like with the pandemic, what do we want to do? We want to eat and hide. Stay inside. It's normal. It's the wiring of the brain. So don't beat yourself up about it. That's point number one, please. That's point number one. That just compounds negativity. If you're feeling bad about feeling bad, if you're feeling bad about the negativity, that's just causing it, isn't it? Throughout the whole lockdown, um, there's psychologists and counselors, et cetera, inside my Six Steps to Slim program. And I was doing a lot of work, split screen, live videos and content, et cetera, with them talking about stress management. But it... The, it's, it's stress in general, it's methods and tactics to fix it. Here on this video, we're just applying it to food. The biggest thing that kept coming up and up and up and up again with stress management was try and fix the stress. Again, it's causality. It's not your fault you feel stressed. Humans get stressed. We're perhaps the most stressed of all mammals. You've seen wild animals, they're always stressed. If you even look at them, they go <laughs> and freeze. And then if you take one step, they'll run off. That's you too. It's survival. It's survival. Um, so hu humans are perhaps the most stressed because we have the ability to predict the future as well and we can think about all the things that might go wrong. That's what anxiety is. Thoughts of the future, the things that have gone wrong, depression, thoughts of the past. We've got all this to contend with too, real danger and imaginary, unlimited imaginary danger. Haven't we? Um, so it's not your fault you feel stressed. Number two, it's not your fault that you want, this is not point number two, this is point one B. <laughs> it's not your fault you want to escape it. The classic Freudian psychology, humans move towards pleasure and away from pain. It's not your fault you want to escape the stress either. So we all need stress management methods. We all need tactics to deal with and cope with stress. Those not being the same thing. My point one was it's not your fault, it's your function. Number two, Try and deal with the stress. Dealing and coping is not the same. Point number two is try and fix the thing that's causing you stress. You might not always be able to. But if you're feeling stressed, there's a reason why. There's a reason why. Try and dig deep. Try and delve into the causality. Try and attack it at the root cause of the problem. Can you fix the thing that's causing the stress? That cuts it off. Job done. Maybe never to return. Maybe you can't but maybe you can. Point number three is what do you do if you can't? Some, some stresses you can't fix. The pandemic, not your fault. You can't fix it either. So for that, we need stress coping mechanisms. And that's, this is where food comes in. Using it as a stress coping mechanism or a boredom coping mechanism. Again, boredom just being food and a boredom another symptom of lockdown, isn't it? But food is not an effective coping mechanism. It's so expensive. You know it isn't an effective coping mechanism because you've tried it. I've tried it too. We are going to try it again. Again, the human brain's wired for it. It's not even food that you really want, you know, when you're feeling stressed. It might feel like it's food, but it's not. Your brain's just linking food to what you really want. Food is allowing you to feel better. That's what you really want. You're looking for stress relief. You're looking for distraction. You're looking for a dopamine hit from the brain. That's what junk food, food, but junk food especially, salt, sugars, and fats, particularly blends of these together. This is what they give us. 
stress, cortisol hormones in the brain. How do we get rid of that? Let's fight it. We want to feel good. We want to escape. We want to distract. That's what you really want. It's not your fault you feel stressed. Try and fix the stress if you can, though. Some stresses can be fixed. Try not to just ignore them. Hiding from problems doesn't fix them. Sometimes it's face the demon, isn't it? Attack the problem if you can. Do what you can. That's always number two. Number three, if you can't do anything about it, yes, have stress management methods. Yes, have stress coping mechanisms. Food's one of them, but food's costly. Very expensive. No, not in terms of money. You can buy that multi-pack for cheap. In terms of health and your goals. Not anybody's goals, but you're watching, listening to this video, wherever you are on the internet. Because you have, you're interested in some way, shape or form in health or body weight or nutrition, your health, being healthier, being happier, something along these lines. That is what food costs you when we overeat it. Yes, it gives us that little dopamine hit, but at what cost? Not much in terms of money or effort. 50p a chocolate bar, open it and in it goes. But then it can turn into just more and more and more, especially when we're stressed, can't it? It can just turn into too much and then that can turn into body weight and health management issues. And then it's created problems and it's not solved any. I promise you one thing, and this is a harsh realization. This might be a little harsh, but this is true. Unless it's starvation, which in the Western world, mostly on average, you've got the opposite problem. There isn't a single problem in your life that chewing is going to fix. Eating doesn't fix life's problems. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's money problems, he should said this, she said that, the pandemic, work stress, back to work, not back to work, whatever it is, family stress. Chewing's not going to fix it. Eating is not going to fix it. It's going to compound negativity and problems. Yes, you'll distract yourself, but it's such an expensive distraction. It costs about 100 calories per minute. It's an average, but 100 calories per minute. So 60 minutes. How many calories could you eat <laughs> in an hour? How long is it going to take to burn those back through? Running is 250 calories per half an hour. To lose one pound, 17 and a half thousand. No, sorry, 17 and a half hours. I was thinking two numbers in my head at once then. It's three and a half thousand calories in a pound. 17 and a half hours. No, again, that's terrible maths. 7.5 hours. <laughs> Too many. Too many. I shouldn't try and do mental arithmetic in the middle of a rant. 250 calories per half an hour, though, and it's 3,500 3, calories per pound. You can eat them way faster than you can burn them. So it, it's not your fault that you get stressed. It's not your fault you want to feel better or escape it or be distracted from it either. It's really not. But we need stress coping and management methods that are helpful and not harmful. Ones that are not harming your other goals or your physical health. Or even sometimes our mental health, because even sometimes after we've eaten it, we think, oh, why have I done that? It didn't even help. Did it? Now we've just got two problems. The thing that was making us stress in the first place still exists. And now we've got body weight management and goals too. Don't we? So it's compounding problems. So point number three and four together on the summary is essentially look after yourself. Be nice to yourself. <laughs> Be nice to yourself. Pamper yourself. You know, when you feel stressed, yes, you want to feel better. Yes, you want to distract and you want to escape. That's okay. If we can't, maybe we can fix it. Maybe we can't. Even if you can or can't fix it, still look after yourself, your mental and your physical health. Take a little bit of time for yourself. Like we said, it's not the food you're looking for. It's to feel better. If you can make yourself feel better in other ways, you won't try and get as much from food. You won't try and grab and grasp for as much from that one costly area if you're making yourself feel better in other ways. So run a bath. Put some candles on. Read a book. Talk to a friend. Talk to your coach. Your fat loss coach. 
talk to a loved one, walk the dog, enjoy the weather, listen to your favorite music, pop on a film. Maybe get a little controlled snack or two, maybe eat a little bit more, but keep it under control. It's good to eat some food sometimes. When it's in control, we don't feel guilty. There's no negativity that comes from it. Get somebody else to cook the dinner, the evening meal. <laughs> get an early night. Book a day off work. Visit somewhere. You know, you know, do, do other things. Anything you can. I don't know. I've just listed so many things because I don't know what makes you feel good. I don't know what helps you de-stress. But you could make a list. Things that make me feel good. Things that make me feel better. Things I enjoy. Food's one of them, for sure. But in terms of your goals, it's so costly, isn't it? In terms of your health, it can rack up to way too much. So when you feel stressed, not your fault. Try and attack it. Try and deal with it and cope with it. When coping with it though, the more you can turn to other stress management methods, other people, friends and family, the more you can look after and pamper yourself in other ways, the less we'll turn for and grasp for that very costly and expensive method of food. Thank you for listening. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is enough of a ranting and rambling from me for one day, don't you think? Enough of an ear beating for one day. Thank you for listening. If you liked this video, please um, give it a like. Again, like I said earlier in the video, if you've got any comments on any of these things, stress or emotional eating or stress coping mechanisms or stress management or fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, any of the other any of the other 1,000 things mentioned in this video, please hit me up with a comment or a private message. If you private message the Sun Society page, it'll come um, straight through to me. So wherever you've been watching or listening, thank you so, so much. And I hope to see you again soon.